So guys, please subscribe, comment, like, and share this video. I'd appreciate it. So guys, in this next news story, absolute madness going on in Swansea. And this is the moment two families brawled at a cemetery with machetes and axes in front of terrified mourners. It was a high-speed chase which culminated in chaos at Morriston Cemetery in Swansea. Footage showed one man chasing someone in his van through a row of gravestones before jumping out and running at him with a pickaxe handle. He was joined by another two men who leaped out of a van wielding a hammer and a brick while others can be seen holding machetes and planks of wood. There was footage caught on dash cam of one of the vans and it shows being driven at high speed past mourners, narrowly missing one person if you have a look on the left hand side who was being pushed in a wheelchair. So seven of those men who were involved in this have now been jailed with South Wales Police branding it as an appalling incident. So as I said, footage of the violent scenes which happened on August 5th last year were caught on the dash cam of James Cole, who's 45. He's been jailed for more than two years for his role. It starts off by showing him running into his van as a black, looks like an R32, skids and collides with another vehicle in the background. Another camera in the van shows two others get in as Kofi drives at speed down a cemetery path in pursuit of another vehicle. After getting out of the van, the two groups can be then seen clashing before Kofi returns back to the car and if you see, behind his left ear is bleeding. There were two people who were seriously injured following the incident, including one teenager who was actually hospitalised after being stabbed. Armed police were called to the scene by shock members of the public, while videos recorded by onlookers showed the chaos which was unfolding in that cemetery, guys. All this happened in a cemetery. So Swansea Crown Court heard it was the latest in a long-running feud between two traveller families. And the judge said many of those involved had been high alert for violence at the funeral. The judge said it was beyond the realms of coincidence that those attending the service all had weapons including machetes, hammers, shovels and other tools available for use straight away when things turned nasty. James Cole, who's 45, was jailed for two years and three months for violent disorder, possession of an offensive weapon and dangerous driving. Jeffrey Torsey and John Cole, both 24, were jailed for 18 months for violent disorder and possession of an offensive weapon. It was Patrick Joseph Murphy, who's 40. He was jailed for two years and eight months for violent disorder and possession of an offensive weapon. It was Andrew John Thomas, who was jailed for three years for violent disorder and dangerous driving. It was John Joe O'Brien. He was jailed for 16 months for violent disorder and possession of an offensive weapon. It was Martin John O'Brien, who's 58. He was jailed for 16 months for violent disorder and possession of uh, an offensive weapon. There was Paddy Murphy and John Murphy. They were the teenage sons of Patrick Murphy and they were given suspended jail sentences and ordered to undertake unpaid work. So Detective Chief Inspector Mike Owen said this was an absolutely appalling incident that terrified people attending the cemetery in the middle of the day. The group were all known to each other, extended family members committed violent offences and were seen using weapons against each other. I hope the sentences today provides reassurance to the community that this kind of behaviour won't be tolerated and anybody committing these acts will face the consequences of their actions. The investigation team were resolute in their commitment to fully investigate the disorder in the cemetery, working with other police forces to detain and investigate the individuals. So guys, absolute madness going on in the cemetery. And guys, in this next news story, coming from Bedford, two men have been jailed for almost nine years after drugs and cash were £300,000 seized from one of their homes. Shabazz Mir is 29 and Shazad Mir is 28 were arrested by Bedfordshire Police during a warrant at Shabazz's home in January. Police had received reports both brothers were involved in an organised crime group dealing both coke and heroin. They were also using children as drug runners and would threaten these children with violence if they failed to help sell their products. During a search, officers found bulldozers of cash worth £20,000 and large amounts of coke and heroin and cannabis worth up to £10,000 and other items associated with drug dealing and such burner-style phones. Text messages exchanges from one of the phones retrieved show Shazad texting a buyer, 3pmg, I'm live, 
which a drugs expert interpreted as meaning the phone is ready to supply drugs, further implicating Shazad. So Mia and Mia, both of Bradford, pleaded guilty to six drug dealing offences, covering the supply of cocaine, heroin and cannabis, as well as possession of criminal property. And both were sentenced and handed four-year jail terms for drug offences at Luton Crown Court. Detective Constable Adam Geary from Bedfordshire Police's Boss and Guns and Gangs Unit, who investigated the case, said both men were found in possession of large amounts of drugs and cash, which evidently showed their part in a large-scale drug supply enterprise. The fact these two men involve children in their criminal enterprise shows the ruthless lengths these gangs will go to, putting young people at risk of serious harm in order to line their own pockets. This is the latest in line of recent successes we have had in tackling serious and organised crime in Bedfordshire, and our teams will relentlessly pursue and disrupt those who practice this criminality in this line of work. A smuggler hid a gun in a secret van compartment which was filled with expanding foam. Radic Dobias, who's 42, was caught after a VW van was stopped in Dover by Border Force officials. Following a search, a dog sniffed out a secret compartment in April 2018. National Crime Agency investigators were called and discovered a Slovakia-manufactured self-loading semi-automatic firearm as well as 8 kilos of loose ammunition, 3 boxes of ammunition and 2 magazines. The driver, who claimed he was collecting a race buggy, was cleared of all the offences. The organiser of the importation, Marek Platko, was found guilty in December 2018 and he was jailed for 22 years. So Czechs National, Dobias was caught at Manchester Airport in March last year and arrested. He pleaded guilty to importing prohibited weapons with intent to evade a prohibition and being knownly concerned with the fraudulent evasion of prohibition on the importation of prohibited ammunition. And yesterday, he was jailed for 12 years and 9 months. So the prosecutor told the court that on February the 17th, 2018, Platko and Dobius travelled to the Czech Republic as a test of dummy run. During that trip, they exchanged messages, including one that translated as, the foam is still drying up. On March the 10th, the van travelled back to the UK and was not stopped with Platko and Dobius travelling back to Manchester the next day. A month later, the two men drove the van from Dover to Calais. Platko was said to be responsible for organising the importation with Dobias acting as the practical element in preparing and concealing the gun and ammunition in the bulkhead of the van. In a message exchange between them, Platko said, assembly foam needed. He later said the foam was still dry. Whilst in the Czech Republic, photos were taken on the foam belonging to Platko, one of which showed the foam inside the van, which was stopped by the border force, and another showed Dobius lying on the floor underneath the van. On April the 30th, Mr. Kral, the driver, was stopped at Dover Eastern Dock. He told officials he was picking up a buggy for his boss. The van was scanned and officials became aware of the expanding foam after drilling into the side panel of the van. After removing the foam, they found a tinfoil wrap package which contained a black box with the label handgun and another reading, ammunition. Absolute madness, guys. Look at these clever ways people are bringing guns into the country. So the NCA branch commander, Mark Howe, said, Radek Dobias played an integral role in the importation attempt, with evidence showing he handled the gun and ammunition personally. These items had the potential to cause serious injury and death, and the group had imported enough ammunition to do untold damage if used on the streets of the UK. So guys, there's a few stories coming from the UK. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.